Students, this last group of videos goes with section 3.5, Symmetry. You know, we're drawn to things that are symmetric. Things where what's happening in some sense on the right-hand side mirrors what's happening on the left-hand side. We see that in some in people's faces, we see that in things around us. And now, it turns out we can actually mathematically analyze things that have this feature, a feature of symmetry. So let's start off by talking about line symmetry. Line symmetry means that we have some kind of line upon which if you reflect an object, it actually lands right on top of itself. So we actually, it actually coincides with itself. So uh, let's take a look at some figures and tell uh, whether each figure has line symmetry. So here's the first figure. Is there a line upon which this figure is symmetric? Well, yeah, because I mean, just you're, you're attuned to it. You have the symmetry, you can't help it. It seems right there, doesn't it? If we were to consider the um, reflection of this shape uh, along this line, we'd see that the image would actually coincide with the original. So in fact, yeah. Oh, what about any, any place else? Like, what about here? It looks like that might be it, but you see, it's not quite right. You see that over here, that part sticking out, that part sticking in? When you reflect it, it's not going to quite work, actually, perfectly well. In fact, if you try these other things, not very symmetric, this is the only uh, line symmetry. So it has line symmetry, exactly one. One line symmetry. Let's take a look at another example. How about a lightning bolt? Maybe you've read stories where, in fact, People have lightning bolts on their foreheads. Well, is this symmetric or not? Well, can you see? That looks like it might be symmetric, but it's not. Because if you actually remember, were to look at the reflection over the line, this point would be way down here. That's not part. That's not going to coincide. So even though it might seem like it is, that's not going to coincide. No, 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 no. <laughs> no line symmetry. Look at me. All right. How about this interesting? Um, somewhat colorful uh, shape. Well, actually, you can sense the symmetry here. There's actually a lot. So we have line symmetry here. That's one. If we, if we reflect around this line, we get a winner. Also here, so there's two. Can you see any more? Check this one out. If you reflect right along here, the image will coincide with the original thing. And now that you see that one, you can certainly see this one. So this is very symmetric. There are four lines of symmetry. One, two, three, four. Very cool. Another type of symmetry is called rotational symmetry, where in some sense there's a, a fixed point, and when you rotate by a certain angle about that fixed point, you actually see the image coincides with the original image. Let's take a look at some examples. Rotational symmetry here? Absolutely. And you can see it. If I put the center point here as the fixed point, just watch the shape and, and see the peak is on the top, right? The peak is back on the top. Now, what angle did I pass that through? Well, if you think about it, from here to here, is actually going to be 120 degrees. And you can think about that, since, since it's an equilateral triangle, really there's 360 degrees around, and I've got these three vertices, and they're all equally spaced out, so this vertex has to go to that one. So 360 divided by three is actually 120. So this actually has a rotational symmetry, 120 degrees, and we say actually that the order is three, because as we go around, we see we get one, two, three before we get back to where we started from. So in fact, this we say has um, rotational symmetry of 120 degrees, and it has order of symmetry three. How about another example? Kind of like a rainbowy shaped thing. Um, does it have rotational symmetry? Well, is there a place that looks good, except that before it was a, ra a rainbow and now it's a happy face. So that's not the same thing. We don't, it doesn't coincide with the original. 
In fact, there is no rotational symmetry here. This has line symmetry. Line symmetry. That's not rotational symmetry. So no rotational symmetry here. New, 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 new. All right, how about this really cool star? Well, sure, this actually has rotational symmetry. And you can see that because if I take this, keep the center point fixed, and then just spin it, it lands on itself. One, two, three, four, five, and now I'm back home. So each, each point of the star can go around to any other point, and there's five points. So in fact, this is going to have order of symmetry five, and we can actually figure out the angle since the points, the five points, and they're equally spread around 360 degrees. We take 360 divided by five, we see 72 degrees. So the, the angle of rotation is 72 degrees, and we see some really spectacular symmetry in the beautiful star. Let's take a look at a real-world application where we can see symmetry happening in nature. Let's describe the symmetry that we see in each diatom and draw any lines of symmetry. And uh, if there is rotational symmetry, let's give the angle and the order of symmetry. So let's sort of do the whole. Take, we'll give the first drawing of a diatom. And I look at this and I see that there is no line symmetry because if I draw a line anywhere and reflect, it doesn't quite match up, doesn't coincide perfectly. But there is rotational symmetry. Lines up perfectly. So rotational symmetry, and I went sort of how far around did I go? I went sort of halfway around a full cycle, so that's 180 degrees. So it's order two. Order two gets it back. So two times it's back. So this actually has rotational symmetry, 180 degrees, order two. How about this one? Lots of symmetry going on here. Can you see some of it? First of all, there's rotational symmetry. Because if I were to rotate 90 degrees, I get the same thing. Rotate 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. This has rotational symmetry of 90 degrees, or it'll be four. Four times it gets me around, so that's pretty straightforward. But there's also lines of symmetry here. Do you see the lines of symmetry? If I reflect around here, it's symmetric. Reflect around here, it's symmetric. Even reflect around here, it's symmetric. There are lots of lines of symmetry here. So I see one, two, three, four lines of symmetry, and we also see that has rotational symmetry. So this is a very, very, very symmetric piece of nature. If we now move from the plane to actually three-dimensional space, we can look at solids and see various types of symmetry within solids. Let me just show you a couple of types of symmetry. One is uh, called symmetry, uh, plane symmetry. Plane symmetry means that I can find a plane that actually cuts the object into two pieces which are congruent but reflected images of each other. So for example here, if I cut this right in half, you can see that the top and the bottom would be reflections of each other. There's also a notion of a symmetry about an axis, which means that I have a, a straight line upon which if I just rotate by a particular angle, I see the same thing as I saw before. And you can see that here it seems like a 90 degree angle, and this image looks the same as that image. So this has line symmetry as well. Uh, similarly, take a look at this like this, this has tons of um, axis symmetry. No matter how I turn it, it looks the same. And it also has uh, this plane symmetry. Cut right in the center. This will actually um, be similar in reflection to the bottom. Let's take a look at some examples together. So here we go. Nice prism. Pentagonal prism. What do we see here? Lots of symmetry. Lots of symmetry. First of all, we have um, plane symmetry. If we cut this thing right in half, 
the top and the bottom are reflections of each other, so they're actually congruent, so that's pretty cool. So that's straightforward. But there's also line symmetry. Imagine piercing the very center of this with a line, hard for me to do it. Then if I were to twist this a little teeny bit so that this point becomes that point, then this point would become here, it would all fit perfectly, lockstep. And so in fact, we see a lot of symmetry here. There's in fact a lot of, a lot of symmetry here. You can actually look for planar symmetry. Uh, if you cut a plane right here and straight down, do you see how this side here is a reflection of that side there? Do you see those two things actually reflecting? So there's a plane, lots of plane symmetry all over the place. Lots of stuff. How about this? The rectangular prism. Um, planar symmetry, lots. Put a plane right halfway between here. You can see this piece and this piece are reflections. You can actually put a plane sort of between right down here. And so this front rectangular prism is actually a reflection of the back rectangular prism. And there's lots of, lots of, in fact, there's even a, let me show you a really crazy plane symmetry. Go along the diagonal here, along this edge. So this edge, and then cut through the diagonal. You'll get two triangular prisms that are going to actually be um, reflections. So lots of plane symmetry. And what about symmetry around an axis? Absolutely. Pick this axis right here, the very center of these two faces. If you were to now uh, rotate by 90 degrees, you'd get back to this, the same exact shape. Similarly here, if I put the axis like this, right through the center of this face and the invisible face on the bottom, and rotate, same kind of thing, 180 degrees, you can see that. And similarly, if we take this face and pierce it right in its center and come across correspondingly on the other side, then we'd see a similar type of uh, symmetry as well. So lots of symmetry here, plane symmetry, symmetry about an axis, three-dimensional objects do have interesting symmetry. We can classify certain types of them. Beauty, it's all around us. 